blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Preachers, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Everybody is crisis. It's not the will of God. Christians who are standing by to hear a problem and flee are not God's children. They have found the church but have not found Christ. Your hand is not as wide as God's hand. Your hand is not as good as God's hand. Brother, there's nothing you can do well that God cannot do better. When things happen adversarially, those who stand by God become testified. What's the difference? Where you are running to is not the answer. Who is with you is the power. And this morning, God is with you. I said the Lord is with you. Out of your children, the whole world will be blessed. Aren't you glad that steadfastness and commitment do not end with you, but a promise to your own children. Somebody say amen for that. this morning hallelujah amen. amen God put your eyes on me this morning for one minute how many of you have been in this ministry for 10 years Good. 5 years 2 years since 2 years you've been here let me see your hand You've been here now for one year. Let me see your hand. Good. Thank God. Well, I have been here before some of you. I've been here more than 10 years. I saw the bet of what God is doing today. Aren't you glad that what you are a part of is a living organ? Yes. Let me hear you say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Join hand with someone on your left and right. Make sure you are standing even when you are sick. God still raises people up. Two months ago, I called the bishop. Hold your hand with someone. It's part of my prayer. Now the Lord wants me to be here today. I have so much doing at home at this time because of our national situation. But God told me over two months ago I should be here today. And he said, what a befitting thing, Carlton will be here. And I know this week, God has honored his name in this place. That's not the end. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It is just the beginning. You wouldn't believe that when I first came to Chapel Hill, this church was about 500 people. 
And God told me, say to them, this will one day become children's church. The Lord said to me, after two years, tell them they are going to cross to the other part of the street. And the bishop looked at me and said, hmm. <laughs> well, I don't come here and accept God has something to say. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, all that has happened, happened for us to know those that are our people. Listen to me. I ask you to put your eyes on me. Have you ever had people around you, you thought they were all your friends, until something happened to you? And then you came to find out that those you thought were your enemy were really your friends. Amen. And then your friends, one by one, take so many excuses and go. Well, a few years ago, our ministry started with five children and seven adults. And today we have seven million members. Hallelujah. All I thought were my friends, when we were small, are not there now. But those I didn't know are there. God knows how to do it well. Yes. And God will do it better than you and I. Yes. I'm not going to shout as I used to. Why not? I'm not going to preach as I used to. I came to deliver a letter from God to you all. Mm -hmm. And to myself. And at the end of the day you'll be glad you are here. Hallelujah. Father we thank you. Just glorify your name this morning. Yes. With signs and wonders. Yes. More than anything else. Oh. Let hearts be open to hear what you have to say. We are grateful. We saw the bet of the revival of this ministry. We are grateful you told us. We who saw the breakthrough shall not see the memorial. It shall leave till Jesus come back. Bless your people with hearing ears this day. And let the word that will come out of my mouth become a seed that will help everyone plus myself to do greater things for the kingdom extension. Thank you for Bishop Polk and the team. Thank you for the saints that have stood by to say it is your work, it shall not die in my time. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. Yes. Glorify your name. Hallelujah. And let your name be glorified. Yes. I thank you for these lives. Do something tangible for everyone today. At the end, take all the glory. Give your people the blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody say, Amen. Remain standing for one minute while I want to do what I want to do before you sit down. This time last Sunday, I was in Russia. The crusade I went for was taking place in a sanctuary that, national center that took 9,800 people. But the third day, we could not use there anymore. We have to move to their stadium in Russia. And today I'm here. In the middle of the message, the third night, the Lord asked me to say this to them in Russia. You call this in American English, baton. We call it baton in English. It's something used by people who do relay. Four people on a team. One, two, three. Can you come? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you still run? When was the last time you ran? <laughs> this morning. Good. To the bathroom. To the bathroom. You came back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have problem at home. <laughs> I said to people at home, why do people who know you when you were small never you see you big? I know you didn't hear that in America. In my country, when you know somebody as a boy, even if you become the president of the nation, you still look at him as a boy. 
He is the big brother to him. Right. That's why he said to the bathroom. No one else could say that you're done this morning, <laughs> except the brother or the wife. The Lord said to me in Russia, if the baton fall from the anchor man's hand, baton doesn't change hand. That's right. If we are to do a relay race, and I am the anchor man, and I hear the gun or the whistle, bam, and I drop the button. Mm -hmm. This man, no matter how good he is, and no matter how very good she is, and no matter how very, very good he can run, if the first man lose the button, the hope of the last three destroyed. And God said to me to tell the Russian people, don't let the baton drop from your hands. Don't let it fall. No matter how sweaty you are, no matter how anxious you are to win the race, hold it tight. When the going gets tough, get going. You may be seated. When I look at people like Bishop Park, Ora Roberts, Lester Somro, and many people who have been in the ministry for 50 years and above. And I look at the few years I have been in the ministry, 35 years. I think of two things. Lester Sumro, 50 years. Almost 60 years in the ministry. Billy Graham, over 50 years. Ora Robert, over 50 years. And by next year, it will be 50 years since Bishop Paul was ordained to the ministry. And I look at taking 50 years out of my life, what is left, my own life. By September 11, I'll be 55. And uh, these people are still there. In storm, in winter, in dry season time, what you call summer, rainy season time. 50 years in the ministry. I asked myself, could it be that somebody like Lester Somro, T.L. Osborne, Laura Robert, and Billy Graham, or Bishop Park, have never experienced opposition? Then I remember that a few years after I came into the ministry, one of the first things I asked was from a man whom I knew, knew God very well. I said, how do you endure difficult times? And he said to me, the only way you can know how to endure difficult times is to read your Bible very well. That was not what I wanted to hear. Eleven years later, I asked another man, why do God not show preachers the pains ahead? Why don't he show us what we are to see in the front? Always showing us the crown and not the thorns. And the Holy Spirit said to me, if God were to show you the tongues, you will run. That's why it shows you the end from the beginning. Then 
I came to United States 23 years ago. First time in my life I saw boxing on television. 23 years ago was the first time I saw physical boxing on TV. And it was a very, very well announced fight between Muhammad Ali and someone. <laughs> In round two, Muhammad Ali slipped and fell. I thought it was a knockout. And I watched as the referee counted. One, two, three, four. I told the people in the room, that's the end. And people said, no, it's not the end. He's resting. I said, no. He's dead. In my country, when you are resting, people can know. But this is dead. They say, he's not dead. He's picking up courage. He's gaining strength. He will soon get up. When I heard seven, this man jumped up and the referee went to him and said, are you all right? He said, sure. And uh, the fifth round, he knocked out the man that knocked him down. And I said, God, I was asking the man on television, I didn't know he wasn't hearing me. I said, you knocked him down before. Why did you get up for you to do what he did? They counted ten and he was still on the floor. The one that got up after five counts won the fight. Then a few years later, I came back to the United States and saw wrestling on TV. You can laugh at me this morning, I'm telling you my life. There's no wrestling on television before that time in my country. And someone carried someone up like basket, knocked him down, boom! And the man climbed up, coming down like a hawk, only to jump on the man he already laid down and the man pushed up and the one who jumped down was injured and i said what's america telling me <laughs> the man they knocked down refused a knockout and the man that is now beaten flat shifted for the man who came from up to get injured few years later They began to send this film to Nigeria. And every week that I'm in Nigeria, anytime, sports time is a time I don't pray. <laughs> when it's time for that one hour spot, I leave prayer alone. I watch wrestling and I watch boxing. For two reasons. Only in Christianity, people that fall remain on the ground. When boxers are knocked down, they refuse to accept a knockout. They get up, they dust off, they clean their hands. Sometimes they are bleeding. Many times their eyes are swollen, almost covered. They still come forward to fight. But in Christianity, even a push, not even a blow, just a push, the saints sit down, one, two, nine, ten, eleven, twenty.
boxers get up wrestlers get up christians lie down and one day the lord said to me the reason is they don't fight good fight they lose before they enter the ring every prize fighter is an enduring person they run in the morning they lift heavy irons they do exercise they train they learn the act of endurance sometimes you are watching boxing you hear what they call upper court my god you hear your own cheek boom you think that's the end it's not true it's going ahead why is it that we don't borrow the nature of endurance, hard heat, big blow from boxers and wrestlers? When of a truth we know that the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places so out of wrestlers boxers fighters the lord showed me a scripture that has helped me for years genesis chapter 26 i'm reading verse 1 and 2 then go straight to verse 12. As I said, I'm going to try to see if I can be like Bishop Paul to stay here and talk to you. Verse 1. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gera. Verse 2. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Let me read verse 3. Sojourn in this land. Say that with me, everybody. And I will be with thee. Say that loud. And we bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto thy father. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. 
videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Right, verse 2. Read that with me loud. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. The first time the Arab nations, particularly Saudi Arabia, open their doors for Nigerians to come as doctors, nurses, and professors. The total academic strength of our nation went down 70%. All all our doctors and nurses that were very, very reliably leaned lean upon by the government fled to Saudi Arabia because they heard that what they get in Nigeria a year, they get it in Saudi in one month. And the Lord told me to turn this scripture to the people who stayed. It's true. Crisis brought famine. It's true. The money that you will make in foreign land in one month is what those of you at home will make in one year. But God said to Isaac, stay. Sojourn in this land. Stay in this land and I will be with thee. Stay here. I, God, will be with thee. Don't go away. Stay. If you want me to be with you, stay. So I told the doctors in the church, the nurses in the church, stay here. God says he will bless you. Let's look at the covenant that God gave here. Verse 3. I will be with thee. Promise number one. And we bless thee. Promise number two. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. I, I, I four times. I learned from here that the people that God will bless most are those who stayed with God. Somebody say amen. amen. Many times, the gift of endurance is not in the church. Many, many, many times, we are the hallelujah people. We are the saints that are only a part of what is finished. We do not stay where there's smoke and fire. We like to be where everything 
is quiet. One of my brother in Germany wrote me a letter. I said, sir, I know you are very influential at home. I need you to help me get a plot of land in a very, very quiet place. And I look around the whole city. There was, there's only one quiet place, cemetery. <laughs> so I wrote him and I said, I found the land. All your neighbors are quiet. They don't look for trouble. They are very peaceful. And the land is free. He said, where? And I said, cemetery. Where they bury the dead. He said, I don't want it. I said, that's the only quiet part of town. Every other place in the city, there's noise. There are troubles. And he rejected the offer. I'm here today to ask you, is it the Lord that put you here? How many of you think God put you here? Let me see your hand high above your head, not just near your eyes. How many of you can sincerely say, it is God that brought me here today? Even if you are here visiting. All right. As far as I'm concerned, it is God that knitted my life and the bishop's life together. The dead do us begin. You know the covenant people say marriage, till dead do us part. This man is till dead do us begin. That's not just the end. It's for eternity. Can you say amen? amen? We know what God says to us. Now God came to Isaac. I wouldn't have expected that when crisis hit and famine hit the nation, that Isaac will see God. But verse 2 says, And the Lord appeared to Isaac and said to him, Stay here. When you stay, I will be with thee. If I were you, I would say amen to that. If you stay, I will be with thee. I will bless thee. And out of thy seed. How can God be talking to a man just married, no children? And God is already seeing his seed seed. Out of thy seed shall all the countries be blessed. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Few years ago, the Lord told us that this church is going to be a warehouse. A clearing house for the world. It's going to be a storehouse that people will come from different nations to take from what is here and take home. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Well, whether you believe it or not, as this church started to grow in music and grow in arts, I began to send people here. And... From here, first time, we took the act of good sanctuary choir home. And I'm glad to tell you, what we borrowed from here has increased. 750 voices on Sunday morning. We borrowed it from here. And if you have lost what God gave you, get it back. The tendency of running away wherever there's crisis is not the will of God. Christians who are standing by to hear a problem and flee are not God's children. They have found the church, but have not found Christ. So, God said to Isaac, stay here. It's true, there's famine. It's true, there's trouble. 
but don't move. If you want me to bless you, stay here. And the Lord said to him, thank you. Stay where you are. I will bless you. I will bless your seed seed. Out of your children, the whole world will be blessed. Aren't you glad that steadfastness and commitment do not end with you, but a promise to your own children? Somebody say amen for that. God said to Isaac, you are just the beginning, but your children's children will experience my blessing. And Isaac said, yes, Lord. Verse 12. Out of need. Verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land, the land that there was famine. The land where there was crisis. The land where there was pain. The land that had problem. Isaac sowed in that land. Isaac didn't jump and leave. He had confidence in that land. I saw one of our sisters from the choir just now. I hugged her, not Clarice. Clarice vowed to be here till Jesus come. <laughs> but someone who was not herself, I hugged her and said, I want to thank God for you and for your steadfastness. What happened here in the last few months is a test case. It's a question, who is on the Lord's side? It's for us to know long-time visitors from Jesus' committed people. You didn't hear that. God used it to show us. Know that I've been here for 10 years, 15 years as long-time visitors. They were long-time visitors. Baptized visitors. Pay tight visitors. Had membership card visitors. Attended catechism visitors. Visitors stay when it's convenient. And they go when heat comes. And in every church in the whole world, I have now by last week preached in 122 nations. All over the globe. There are many visitors in the choir. Among the elders. And among the pastors. They are there. When everybody say hallelujah. But when hit the hallelujah comes. When pain hallelujah comes, when trouble hallelujah comes, <laughs> Isaac so say that with me in that same land, the same year. You can't sow to where you don't want to reap. Isaac sowed. He saw the famine. He saw the pain. He saw the troubles. He went inside the seed he had. He sowed it. Listen to what God, how God punished him for sowing. Let's see how God disgraced him for sowing. And he received a maye cross on your door. In the same year, uh -huh, and hundred 
four. And the Lord. And the Lord. Bless him. Say to your neighbor, the Lord is going to bless you. He sowed. He reaped. Hundredfold. The same year. Glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah with me. He sowed. In the subject of economy. You are told. When there is hardship. Hold your money. But in Bible life, when there's hardship, release your money. When you release it, you receive it. When you hold it, you kill it. Your hand is not as wide as God's hands. Your hand is not as good as God's hands. Brother, there's nothing you can do well that God cannot do better. Amen. Is anybody hearing me? God says stay. If I were you, I would jump up and say, I'm going to stay. I say, I would jump up and say, I'm going to stay. Stand up and say, I'm going to stay. Everybody get up and say, I'm going to stay. So receive. My hundredfold, hundredfold. Blessings. blessings the same year, the same year. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Can you still stand with me for one minute? In my church at home, I teach them how to stand. One minute. And please. Just know that it's not an American preacher preaching this morning. If you are not in wheelchair, somebody next to you will carry you up. Please stand when I say stand. This is Cathedral of the Holy Spirit. Now, give me five minutes while you are standing before you sit down. Verse 13. And the man works great. Look at that. The man worked great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Are you willing to receive that? Yes. Many Nigerians that left for Saudi Arabia are coming back with different sicknesses. Those who stayed with me, I told them, we will know who is on the Lord's side. If you stay, God says, I will be with thee. I will bless thee. Isn't it good enough to know that God is with you? Isn't it most wonderful to know that God didn't only say, I will be with you, but he says, I will bless thee. Yeah. We have a God who be with us and bless us. Amen? Amen? I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people the message continues after this video about anointed you you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of god preachers prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com
Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. The year of famine is a year when everything gets bad. But this man went forward. He went forward. He grew. He worked strong. And the Lord blessed him. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. How do we know those who are on the Lord's side? When things happen adversarily, those who stand by God become testifiers. You will testify. I say you will testify. You will testify that the Lord is good. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He stayed. He planted seed. He worked great. All who ran away. If you read this same story from the book of Ruth chapter 1 verse 1 to 6. A man in that book ran away. He killed his wife. I killed his two sons and killed himself for running from God to run to the enemy's territory. Elimelech died. Isaac lived. What's the difference? Where you are running to is not the answer. Who is with you is a power. And this morning, God is with you. I said, the Lord is with you. Let's read it again. And the man works great. Is that in your Bible? The 13th verse. Read it by yourself. How can I think make progress, became very great, work strong, because God told him, I will be with thee. Can you say amen? amen. I haven't told you yesterday, Bishop, I was, uh, I'm, I'm telling you now. We've commenced the building of our university. No money in Africa, but there's God. Hallelujah. 
I think God is bigger than dollar. God is bigger than dollar. God is bigger than dollars. God is bigger than dollars. We've started the university. First classes may start in October. No money. Yes, God. Where there is God, there's miracle. Somebody say hallelujah to that. The man worked great. He sowed. He reaped. He was great. He went forward. Sit down so we can go into this lesson. The 14th verse. For he had possession of flocks, possession of herbs, and great store of servants. Where all others lacked, he had possessions. That is what God wants to do for his church. Taking them from obscurity. Taking them from mediocrity. Taking them from lack and want. Taking them to make them example in the face of lack and want. That the world may say, Blessed is he that has the Lord God. And I hear you say big hallelujah. hallelujah. Isaac in famine had possessions of flocks, possession of heads, possession of stores of servants. Isaac had more than enough when others had nothing why he stayed say with me he stayed, he stayed. say it again he stayed. try it one more time he stayed. he stayed the last line here didn't quite go well with me i thank god it doesn't happen in america the last line there and the philippines envied him that's the only thing that doesn't happen in america Thank God for United States. No envy. No jealousy. No accusation. No insult. Only miracles. He did what everyone say it can be done. Twelve years ago, this ministry was like any other ministry. Die when it's time to die. Be happy when everybody is happy. Prosper when everybody is prospering. That was what this ministry was before 12 years ago. And 12 years ago, God's Spirit hit this church and said, don't be like everyone else. Be what I want you to be. And suddenly this church got up and built case center build case center where for long everybody had known that it was an integrated church of black and white but this church became one of the first churches that the black people began to come more <laughs> than the whites of other messages are available at Iwo Media Services. Iwo Media Services, inspirational, world-class production. People like me, we don't talk too much because you give account of every word you say. The only people that I don't live long with are those who deviate from what God called them to do. And if you leave the course, no matter how close we have been, I leave you. When you see 
husband and wife devoted to God in a challenging nation like America. Don't just dance, don't just clap, pray for them. Don't get so big not to ask for prayer. As a matter of fact, the bigger you go, the more you ask for prayers. Because when you are on the floor, you don't fall. <laughs> did, did you hear me? When you are on the floor, you don't fall. You only fall when you are high. I have gone around the earth 47 times and I've preached in 102 nations. But the greatest strength I have is the prayer of the saints. I, I don't boast of silver and gold, which I don't lack, but that's not my strength. My greatest strength is to believe that Jesus is the same today as he was before. If faith worked before, it should work now. If it didn't work now, there's no proof that it worked before. I love what God did with Moses. I love what he did with Abraham. I even love what he did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the greatest proof that God did anything with someone before is what he can do today. Say hallelujah. Success stretches people. Success strengthens people. Success brings joy. Success brings happiness. So many people want success. So many people have achieved success. Quick riches without maintenance is worse than inherited poverty. Some of you know how to get there. You don't know how to remove it. But how do you maintain success? Is it in the buying of stocks or investing in real estate? To maintain a balanced success, you must try to spread yourself beyond what you have ability to do. Find out from this life-transforming teaching by Archbishop B. A. Idahosa on how to maintain success and you will always be on top in life. I'm speaking on the subject today, how to maintain success. This message and a collection of other messages are available at Ewo Media Services. Evil Media Services, inspirational, world-class production. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos 
by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me in the preach, he said, This is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. 
And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edepo came to me. Church of God Mission, Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, uh, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oribos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. I'm getting there. I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, or Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Hose university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days you'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis we went to Baltimore flew to New York and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. 
and then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the hood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy sure Dausa. He would say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft, he lifted his I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me. And you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, if was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Bini? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I'll not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold plated aircraft. Chief Benedion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, Give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned, his name Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today, it also started it in 1974-75.
I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign, wonder, anointing, and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days he was riding past and people were crying in my house. And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. 
The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. I said what? Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's the girl's name? I will send it to I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father comes, my late Benson in the outside. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father had said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, In water, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in water, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about nine o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> and another made bed to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations. 
before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> With him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango and all that. And I said, mm, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graving images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? We said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two guests, and two boys and six guests. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. He no mega jere, he no mega ta gi Jesu me gu wese, he no mega ta gu wese.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed
Hello, this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa, his early Christian ministry testimony. As a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, Will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God, the corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938, to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bather Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, 
which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a doctor of law degree from Oral Robert University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife Margaret Idaosa were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supertax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa, who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is, in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. Where they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka. Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work, and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma, remarked, Many who followed 
Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to world leaders, leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors and he applied the principles he learned he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry he was very energetic hard-working one of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa he was committed and consistent and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom have bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 now i'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including "My God is not a poor God." Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cirillo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry.
you must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video, to bless all the people. And make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.